Jello. Hi, Grandpa. I'm just calling to see if you got your delivery, actually. That was a great service. They brought it down right back to the door, and that was it. So you got the milk and eggs and all that stuff? Yep, everything. Very friendly delivery to people, too. You'll have to keep me posted. Hopefully we can get a delivery slot next time. Yep, I'm going to need it. Grocery store delivery apps have been the only way I've been able to help take care of family members during this pandemic. Getting groceries and essential items has become a growing concern for people all over the world. People are afraid to risk their health by going out to the stores, thus they're getting things delivered, they're using services like curbside pickup, and it's become the new norm for many. All of us have had to change the way we shop a little bit uh, because of this pandemic, whether it's uh, getting used to social distancing measures in stores or uh, converting to becoming converts to online ordering. And the grocers have had to, to meet these new expectations, these new demands, and some of them are, are, are kind of struggling to, to keep up with what's been a huge spike in demand for online ordering and also you know, people stockpiling, panic buying, buying many more items than usual. So the impact on the grocery industry has been huge. I think people heard you know, a couple of weeks ago, hey, go out, stock up for two weeks. You might be quarantined for two weeks, have enough supplies. So we saw wholesale apps, Costco, BJ's, those hit their all time highs, right? Um, in terms of new downloads, new installs, new users, and things like Instacart. Instacart is breaking download records for itself every single day lately. And so it just keeps hitting a new all time high. The same thing was shipped, owned by Target, breaking records. These are the shirts that we wear while we're working now. There's been several ways that this has affected our day-to-day -day operations. The main focuses that we've been having lately are making sure that the social distancing guidelines are being followed. The challenges that the shipped employees are facing right now is an overwhelming amount of orders that are being placed and also an under availability of products that the customers are wanting. So they're having to ask the customers while they're picking their orders out for an alternative to the actual product that they want in the first place. So the, the problem is simply that uh, the existing online grocery services were not ever built uh, or haven't been built for this kind of demand. If you look at online grocery penetration in the U.S. prior to the coronavirus pandemic, it was at most about 4% uh, of people who were shopping online um, for groceries. Uh, in the U.K., where I live, it was, it was better. It was twice that, but it was still only 8%. And now, I mean, according to, to some of the figures, in the U.S., it's it's about uh, it's more than 40 percent of the people who have been uh, wanting to place online uh, grocery orders during this time period, and some retailers have seen demand grow as much as 700 percent. There aren't enough delivery slots for people to get to obtain. While most employers are having to lay off their employees, Target and other big retailers are actually having to hire people to keep up with demand. Walmart and Amazon, they they've been kind of on a growth tear. Anyway, when I look at the, the app data, I actually don't see a big change in trend line only because they were already growing at a pretty good rate. Target might be a little bit of a different story. They have a lot less in-app activity. Target really started, you know, getting a boost around basically the beginning of March that led up into its peak of, now this isn't its peak ever, but peak in terms of recency, had like 53,000 downloads on March 15th. Since then it has been falling. I think that was an initial like, let's go out, let's go get our stuff. Now, there are a couple other things that have happened during the pandemic that may not last. So um, if you look at Ocado, for instance, their average order size before the pandemic was 50 items in an order. But during the pandemic, in part because people are panic buying, they're stockpiling, they've seen the average order size increase to 80 items per order. And they don't think that that will last uh, after the sort of pandemic passes. I think in the U.S., there's some opinion polling about uh, you know, how many people actually enjoy doing their weekly grocery shop. And it's only about like 15% of people say that they really like going to the grocery store. So I think if people try online ordering and it works for them and they like it, they're probably gonna continue doing it after this is over. The grocers are gonna have to get used to meeting that online demand. It's probably put forward um, their business plans in this regard by several years. No one knows what to expect and where this is gonna go. We still don't know where it's gonna go completely. They be having to go out there to, you know, taking a trip to the supermarket and not finding what you need. Thanks a million again. Okay, no problem. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.